The Eyes of Evil, Ursula von der Leyen's Double Standard on Ukraine and Palestine. Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission, has become a figure that embodies the contradictions and moral failings of the European Union's foreign policy. Through her actions and words, von der Leyen has shown a clear and troubling double standard in the way she approaches international conflicts, most notably in Ukraine and Palestine. Under her leadership, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is treated as the epitome of evil, deserving of sanctions, condemnation, and unwavering support for Ukraine's defense. Yet, when it comes to the decades-long oppression of Palestinians, von der Leyen stands by Israel's side, painting a picture of moral righteousness, as if Israel's violence is somehow exempt from scrutiny. This inconsistency, this clear bias, casts a shadow over the EU's supposed commitment to human rights, revealing a policy shaped by geopolitics and alliances, rather than justice. Russia, the face of evil. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Ursula von der Leyen has taken a firm stance, labeling Russia as an aggressor and Vladimir Putin as a tyrant who must be stopped at all costs. In the eyes of the European Commission, Russia's actions represent an existential threat to the European order. Sanctions were swiftly implemented, military aid was sent to Ukraine, and von der Leyen's speeches have been filled with rhetoric of solidarity with the Ukrainian people, portraying them as victims of an unprovoked attack by a new evil. There's no denying that the war in Ukraine is a human tragedy. Millions have been displaced, thousands killed, and cities reduced to rubble. But the narrative pushed by von der Leyen is one-sided, Russia is evil, and those opposing it, by default, are on the side of good. The EU, under her guidance, presents itself as a bastion of democracy, freedom, and human rights, fighting against an authoritarian regime. Yet, this moral clarity and outrage are conspicuously absent when the conversation shifts to other conflicts, especially Palestine. Palestine, the forgotten victims. When it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, von der Leyen's approach is disturbingly different. For decades, Palestinians have faced systemic violence, occupation, and the denial of basic rights by the Israeli state. Yet, under von der Leyen's leadership, the European Union has remained largely silent on Israel's transgressions, consistently backing Israel and framing its actions as self-defense. Von der Leyen has gone as far as to describe Israel as a beacon of democracy in the Middle East, casting the state as a victim of terrorism while turning a blind eye to its own aggressive military campaigns, illegal settlements, and the blockade of Gaza. The suffering of Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, where Israeli bombings regularly destroy homes, schools, and hospitals, is downplayed or ignored altogether. Where is the same moral outrage we see in Ukraine when Palestinians face violence on a daily basis? Where are the sanctions against Israel for violating international law through its occupation and illegal settlements? Von der Leyen's silence on these questions is deafening. The double standard. The contrast between von der Leyen's stance on Ukraine and her stance on Palestine exposes a glaring double standard. When Russia violates Ukraine's sovereignty, it is immediately condemned as evil. But when Israel occupies Palestinian land, enforces apartheid-like conditions, and kills civilians, it is somehow justified as self-defense. Von der Leyen's selective morality raises serious questions about the EU's commitment to human rights. How can the European Union, under her leadership, claim to stand for justice and the rule of law when it so blatantly applies different standards depending on the geopolitical context? The principles of international law, human dignity, and the right to self-determination should not be applied selectively. The fact that Russia is vilified while Israel is embraced points to a deeper hypocrisy in European foreign policy. Europe, as a political entity, remains deeply aligned with the West's strategic interests, and Israel, despite its repeated violations of international law, remains a key Western ally in the Middle East. Ukraine, on the other hand, represents a frontline in Europe's struggle to contain Russian influence, making it a cause worthy of vocal and moral support. For von der Leyen, therefore, the difference lies not in the nature of the conflict or the suffering of civilians, but in where Europe's geopolitical interests lie. The Eyes of Evil, von der Leyen's Complicity It is this hypocrisy that has earned von der Leyen the label of embodying the eyes of evil. Her leadership reveals a willingness to overlook human suffering when it is politically convenient, 
while demonizing other actors to maintain the illusion of moral superiority. In Palestine, we see the eyes of evil in the form of neglect and complicity, as Europe continues to provide political cover for Israeli aggression. This double standard damages the EU's credibility on the global stage. It shows the world that Europe's values are flexible, bent by the pressures of alliances and geopolitical interests. The supposed defense of human rights and international law is little more than a facade when those same principles are abandoned in Palestine. A call for consistency. If Ursula von der Leyen truly believes in the values of freedom, democracy, and human rights, then her actions must reflect those beliefs consistently. The EU cannot continue to portray itself as a defender of international law in Ukraine while turning a blind eye to the suffering of Palestinians. It is not enough to condemn Russia's aggression while excusing or ignoring Israel's actions in Palestine. The eyes of the world are watching, and so are the victims of conflicts across the globe. If von der Leyen continues to apply one set of standards to Ukraine and another to Palestine, history will remember her not as a leader of justice, but as a symbol of Europe's moral decay, where strategic alliances matter more than human lives.